we are looking at cumulative frequency, a cumulative frequency column and a frequency table, creating cumulative frequency histograms and ogives, percentiles and finding the median. So here's a set of scores in a recent maths assignment. They've been nicely put in order for you and you'll see that they're definitely going to have to be grouped data. So our scores are from 60 up to 70, up to 80. You'll see I'm using the convention where I don't say this is less than 70. We just assume 60 to less than 70, 70 to less than 80. 90 up to um, 100. Just not sure if we would normally put that. We can put 100 there if we want. It might make it easier for you. If you prefer, you can of course say up to less than 70, up to less than 80, up to less than 90, and up to 100. That would be okay. Technically this would be less than 100 as well. So our frequency. There's two scores in the 60s, three scores in the 70s, seven scores in the 80s, six scores in the 90s. Cumulative frequency, you may remember, is adding up the frequency so far. So what that gives us for the first row, it just says, well, two students got scores of up to just under 70. For the next row, we then add on the frequency here, so 2 plus 3 is 5, and that says five students got scores of below 80, including those below 70. Adding 7 here gets me 12. So... That says 12 students got scores of below 90. Adding 6 is 18. That says there were 18 students in the class in total, which we could check by adding that up. Yep, the sum is 18. Remember, capital sigma means sum, total. And so that number and adding up this column should obviously always be the same. And that says 18 students got below 100% or 18 students in total. So that's what the cumulative frequency column tells you. Now, a very useful strategy is making something called a cumulative frequency ogive. It's an odd word. It sometimes used to be called a polygon. And it's a graph of your cumulative frequency. In the textbook, they actually just do the ogive. So these are ogives, little line graphs of the cumulative frequency. I find it easier to make a cumulative frequency histogram first and then add the ogive. So I'll do that and I'll mention what your other options could be. When you're drawing a cumulative frequency ogive, you must be very, very accurate. This is not the time for not using a ruler or not measuring or getting your gradations wrong. You must be perfect because you're going to read answers from this and if you graph it wrong, like the break-even analysis, analysis, you'll get the wrong answer. So along the bottom is going to go the scores, and up the y-axis will be the cumulative frequency. So my y-axis needs to go up to 18. So I'll use 9 centimeters. Sorry, I was trying to fit everything on one teeny little screen here and have you still be able to read it. So I'll use 9 centimetres for my y-axis because I'll need to go up to 18 and you go just a little bit further so you've got enough space. I need four columns and the half column at the start. So there's my half column at the start. My columns will be 1, 2, 3, four and go a little bit further. So down here we have our score and remember for grouped data we label the edge of the columns so that starts at 60, 70, 80, 90 and the final group would end at 100. 
See if I can zoom in a little bit for us there. Up the side we have the cumulative frequency and that needs to go up to 18 as I said. So carefully putting your gradations on the grid lines, making sure they're evenly spaced. And this is cumulative frequency. If we had more information, we could put that in the title. So this was scores in a maths assignment. Maths assignment scores. Now, as I said, it's easier often to do this if we make a frequency, a cumulative frequency histogram first. So that means that the scores are on the bottom, the cumulative frequency is going in columns. My frequency, so cumulative frequency starts at 2 for 70 to 80, 5 for, sorry, 60 to 70 was 2, 70 to 80 was 5, 80 to 90 is 12, 90 to 100 is up at our total of 18. You'll notice I'm being really careful using a ruler, making sure I'm staying on the grid lines because you absolutely must be totally accurate with this. So that is a cumulative frequency histogram. The ogive or polygon then goes from bottom left to top right and then to top right again of each column. So from the bottom of the first column up to very carefully the top right of that column then up to the top right of this column, up to the top right of that one, and up to the end. As accurate as you can. I was off a bit just there. Now that is the ogive. The columns aren't actually a part of it, and you can get away without it. It's just that then you've got to remember where to put the line to and it's easiest just to do the columns. I'm quite happy to ha accept a graph that looks like that with the columns involved. So that's your ogive. Now we also have to include percentiles. Now you remember last time we did when we did the frequency histograms we often put percentages up the side it's really easy on this one. Again, leave your half column width after the last um, column. Do another y-axis and where your end point was is 100% of your data. We had, 100, uh, we had 18 students in the class that is 100%. Depending on the question, it will depend on which percentiles we want to show. I'll talk about the concept of a percentile shortly. 50% is always sensible. Now, you can just work out where that will be by measuring. I've got 9 centimetres showing here. So, 4.5 centimetres will be the 50% point. Because I've got 9 centimetres, it depends on whether they want 10% or 25 and 50 and 75. I'll just go for 25, 50 and 75 right now. Now if that's 4.5, then half of that, so 2.25, 
will give me my 25th percentile and 2.25 up from the 50 will give me my 75th percentile. So once you've put some, some percentiles in, then you've got, um, oh, we'd label this cumulative frequency percentage there. So that is a full cumulative frequency ogive. Now, what the percentiles mean is they are a score below which a particular percentage lies. We'll define that. Sorry, um, <laughs> I got distracted. The percentile is a score below which a particular, particular percentage of the data lies. So the 75th percentile, 75% of the data is below that score. So, some questions to tackle about this data. We created a cumulative frequency ogive. Finding the approximate median score. This is one really useful thing about a cumulative frequency ogive. It's really easy to find the median because the median is between the top and the bottom 50% of the data. To find the median, go to your 50% mark, your 50th percentile, move horizontally across until you hit the ogive. When you hit the ogive, turn and go straight down as accurately as you can and from that you can say that the median is between 80 and 90 percent but you can also estimate whereabouts in that range it is and I would say about 86 percent because it's just above halfway between 80 and 90. So our response to that to question B would be that the median score is between 80 percent and 90% at approximately 86%. Sorry, I keep on ending up on an angle. I don't know why. My apologies. Next question. Sorry, we're getting to be a little long here. How many students gained a mark less than 90%? Uh, so, that's easily read from the histogram or the table. You go to your 90% and read the cumulative frequency up to there. So 12 students gained a mark of less than 90%. Find the 75th percentile and explain what it means. So the 75th percentile is, where's my ruler gone? You find out what score that equates to. And again, you go from 75 across to the ogive and straight down and that's going to be a score of about 93%. What that means at D here, the 75th percentile is a score of around 93% and what that means is 75% of my students 
got a score of 93% or less. Sorry, 75% of scores were 93% or less. So that's what the percentiles mean and how we would interpret them. I'm sorry, look at that, it's terrible. Let's try not to do that again. Last question. If students in the top 10% can expect an A grade, how many is this and what score would gain an A? So then of course I've got to get the top 10% or the 90th percentile and work out what score that equates to. Now you remember I've got 9 centimetres here. I would need to work out what distance down would be 10%. So 10% of 9 centimetres would be 10 over 100 times 9 or 0 0.9 of a centimeter. So just there is 90% and that would give me my top 10%. So of course again going across and down and we look like that's about 97%. And how many students is this? It's probably easiest just to find 10% of 18, that is 1.8 or approximately two students. But again, you could work that out from the ogive because you'll see that here, if I went straight across, it's just above 16. So I've got just under two students in that top 10%.